Well, hey folks, over the years, I've shared a lot of my building tactics with you. If you've been with me a while, you watched me build several structures that were up on piers. And I've always said that if you're building a cabin that's up on piers that you intend to heat, how important it is that you skirt the crawl space beneath it. So today I'm going to share the method that I use for skirting my cabins. I've never seen anybody do it in this manner. It's just a system that I have developed over the years. It's always served me well, and I'm sure it'll do the same for you. So let's get on with it. When I build my structures, I prefer to have them up off the ground, at least enough to allow me access beneath them. I may have a new idea further down the line where I need to run a new wire or a pipe or make a repair to an existing one. If you don't allow yourself access beneath your building, eventually you'll wish you had. If your building is close to the ground like this one is, you can simply apply your skirting material directly to your perimeter joist and let it protrude into the ground a few inches or more. This is how I have it at my New York cabin, but with a layer of bubble foil behind it. It has experienced temps of minus 30 and suffered no damage from frost. When I'm pouring my piers, I bring them just above the surface of the ground and build up from there. Here I've added wooden posts and will frame between them later on and apply skirting around the perimeter. The posts make it easier for applying the framework and skirting than if I had poured the concrete to this height. In this application we installed pressure treated timbers on top of the piers and framed walls from there on up. This building isn't lifted off the ground because it's a garage with a carport running along the side of it, where vehicles and equipment will be driven into it. If it was living space, I would have framed a crawl space of two to four foot tall and then built my structure on top of that, like I did here, and here, and here. I'm showing you these different applications because everyone's project is different and hopefully this will give you some ideas for your own individual needs. Okay, so I've shown you a few different options for different applications to give you a few ideas that you can work off of. Now let's go to the number one question that people ask me the most, and that is, what do I use for skirting? Well, my go-to product for skirting my structures has been cement board. I have had great results with it, and I've been using it for probably 15 years now. It comes in three by five foot sheets, fairly easy to work with. It withstands all kinds of weather, and once it's up, it looks good. If you ever decide to put on some fake brick or cultured stone, you already have a concrete base for those products to adhere to. You can also put a stucco finish on it, and it will mimic a concrete foundation. I have also used metal roofing of various types, and that works out good. Comes in various lengths and various colors, and you can install it both horizontal and vertical. Your skirting will get more abuse than any other part of your structure. It's touching the ground, and if applied properly, it's actually buried in the ground, and every drop of rain that comes off your roof will splash upon it. It's only a matter of time that if you've used an inadequate product, you're going to have to replace it. And installing it in the first place isn't any fun. So if you're going to do it, do it right and do it once. Okay, so what I've shared with you so far is standard procedure. I frame between my post with pressure treated lumber, then I apply my cement board to the exterior of that framework. Fairly self-explanatory. The crucial part of the project though, especially in a colder climate where frost is an issue, where your bottom plate comes down near the ground, 
If you pack dirt beneath that bottom plate, in the winter time that dirt will freeze and the frost will push upward on your framework. It'll probably lift your building and cause you a boatload of problems. So let me show you the procedure that I use to eliminate those problems from the get-go. In this clip where I'm applying skirting to the old camp, you can see a void is left beneath the bottom plate. And here at the garage project, there's also a void between the pressure-treated perimeter and the ground beneath it. I never allow my bottom plate to touch the ground. My next step of the process is to fill this void with styrofoam, then apply my cement board and backfill against that. The foam not only prevents the void from filling with dirt that will eventually freeze and heave, but it also serves as a freeze block, preventing the frost on the outside from passing beneath my skirting and into my crawl space. This method may be labor intensive, <laughs> sure it is, but it's certainly worth the time invested. This is not an area where you want to skimp. Now everyone's situation is different, as every one of my projects is different. But the one principle that I continually follow is I always put the styrofoam beneath my bottom plate. I had never seen this done before. It was a solution that I came up with several years ago, and it has served me well ever since. Now this building that I'm standing in is the garage project that you see in this video. There's a dirt floor beneath my feet. I have a tarp over the top of the dirt to act as a vapor barrier, and then rubber horse stall mats on top of that, and it's a wonderful floor. On the outside of this building, right up to the skirting, the ground is solid as a rock. Then on the inside, the dirt is as soft as the day that I put it down. And it's like that because of the styrofoam blocks beneath my wall. Just a simple fix, but a fabulous solution to a problem. On this building, I didn't use cement board for skirting. I went down over the outside of the styrofoam block with an aluminum coil stock. I bent the bevel on the top and went right around the perimeter of the building with that metal. If you use my method in your project, the one thing that I want to mention is the styrofoam that I use is a softer type foam that will compress under pressure. I avoid using a rigid type foam because if the ground beneath my skirting heaves up, I just want the foam to compress and then release in the springtime. If you use a rigid foam here that won't compress, when the ground freezes and heaves up, you might have an issue with that pushing your wall up. But by using a softer foam that compresses easily, I have never, ever had an issue with frost. Okay, so now I just want to say a few words about insulation and venting, and then we'll wrap it up. People are always asking me if I ventilate my crawl space. Well, I do and I don't, and I'll explain what I mean by that. The more ventilation you allow in your crawl space, the less chance you will have of mold and mildew forming under there. That is true. In the winter time, the more ventilation you have in your crawl space, the more chance you will have of all of your pipes freezing up. And that is true as well. Our homestead up on the mountain is off the grid. And as I've shown you in the past, we store food and beverages in our crawl space. By having the crawl space buttoned up tight, we trap the ambient temperature of the ground beneath the cabin, and that works in our favor for several reasons. For one thing, we can keep food and beverages under the cabin for 12 months of the year and have no issues. In the winter time, the traps and the pipes don't freeze, our food and beverages don't freeze, and in the summertime, 
Beverages are kept cold just by the ambient temperature of the ground right up until probably late July. So I go under there all the time. If I see that I have any issues with mold, well then I will change my tactics and allow some ventilation under there. But up until now, I've had no issues with mold whatsoever. Now as far as insulating the framework of my skirting, I've had great success with simply stapling a single layer of bubble foil to the inside of that framework and it's served me very, very well over the years and I've never found any reason to change. So I hope that answers all the questions that you have. At least it'll give you some ideas to work off of. But the one thing that I can't overemphasize enough is that when you do it right, you do it once. And to me, that's just good backwards logic. Frankie and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss.